um, we have a series of uh, four shorter talks this afternoon. Um, the first will be Hamza Fauzi from the University of Cambridge, who will tell us about a lower bound on the positive semi-definite rank of conduct. Okay, thanks a lot, Cynthia. Oops. Yeah, so thanks a lot, Cynthia. Um, and thanks a lot for the organizers for inviting me. Um, so, so I'll talk about the lower bound on the PSD rank of convex bodies. But uh, really, this work is actually a connection between the PSD rank and something called the algebraic degree of semi-definite programming, which is a quantity introduced by so Jiawang Nye, Christian Renestad, and Bernd Schumpfel, which I will explain in, in the talk. Okay. So, so, uh, so just to, to make sure we're all on the same page, so I, I want to um, if the definition, so I'm, I'm working essentially the, the main concept of, of this talk is the notion of a semi-definite lift. Okay, so if I have C is a convex body, I say uh, C has a semi-definite lift. If, if it can be written in the following form, it's a projection so, or, or the image under a linear map of a spectrohedron. Okay, so a spectrohedron is a set defined using a linear matrix inequality. Okay, so, uh, you have PS, so you have matrices, symmetric matrices of size M, say, A0 up to AN. And you look at the set of X such that this linear matrix is positive semi-definite. That's a spectrohedron. And if you can project this and you get C, this is, this is a semi-definite lift. And um, the size of the lift is going to be the size of the matrices, M. And the PSD rank of a convex body is the size of the smallest SDP lift of, of this convex body. Okay? So this is an example of a, of a SDP lift. So this is a linear matrix inequality here. This describes a certain convex set in, in three dimensions, x1, x2, and u. This is the set that you see here. And if you project it on x1 and x2, you get the square. So this is an SDP lift of size 3 of the square, of minus 1. one square. Okay. That would not be the smallest. Uh, that is the smallest. So. OK. Um, yes, so. Uh, so, so how do we actually construct SDP lift? So, so there is a, we have a general method of constructing SDP lift based on the sum of squares method. So essentially you try to certify all the valid linear inequalities of your convex sets using sums of squares from a certain low dimensional subspace and this gives you a, a certain SDP lift. So there's a nice theory behind this. So, but what I'll be interested in here in, is, is, on, is on trying to prove optimality of certain lifts. So essentially in trying to prove lower bounds on, on the PSD rank. Because actually, the PSD rank of some very basic convex sets is still unknown. Okay, so if you look at the regular polygons in the plane, so these shapes, these convex bodies here, we don't know what their PSD rank is. Or, for example, the PSD rank of the permutahedron, this, this object here, which is the, the convex hull of all possible permutations of the vector 1, 2, 3, up to n. Uh, this convex set, we also don't know what, what, what its PSD rank is. Okay. And in fact, the main motivation for, for, for this work is actually a very simple uh, fact about LP lifts, uh, and which is an observation due to Michel Gaumont. Uh, so, so first, what is an LP lift of a polytope? So an LP lift of a polytope is a, is a representation of a polytope as the projection of another polyhedron. Okay, and the size of, the, of this representation is the number of facets of the polyhedron upstairs. So, so we heard about this in the first couple of talks. And so I'm, I'm going to call the, the LP rank or the non-negative rank of a polytope is the smallest size of an LP lift. Okay, so the observation of Gaumont tells us that the, if P is a polytope, then the non-negative rank of P or the smallest LP formulation of P is at least the logarithm of the number of vertices of, of the polytope. Okay, and the proof is very simple. So what is the proof? So assume that I can write P as the projection of a certain polyhedron Q which has M facets. Okay, so I, I want to lower bound M. So the main observation is that if, if I take a vertex of my polytope P and I look at its pre-image in Q, this is going to be a face of Q. Okay, this is not difficult to show. And, and, and now we use kind of a crucial property of, of polyhedra is that any face of, of Q is an intersection of facets. And because I have M facets, okay, I can have at most two to the M such faces. Okay, so essentially the number of, so what we've shown is that the number of vertices is at most 2 to the m, where m is the number of facets of my, of q, and so I have, I have this lower bound. Okay, so it's a very simple result. Okay, and, and uh, the, my, uh, so, so the motivation for this work was to try to find a similar kind of lower bound for, for, for this, because in fact this, this bound turns actually to be, turns out to be tight for these examples that I mentioned before. So for the regular n-gon, the, the LP, uh, Extension complexity of the regular n-gon is log n. And for the permutahedron also, this bound turns out to be tight. Okay, so so, um, so, so, so how, how can we kind of generalize this to get a lower bound on the PSD rank? 
Um, so there is one first kind of idea that, that one can try and, and that, that one can, can implement, um, which is the idea based on, on quantifier elimination. So, so the idea is as follows. So, so first, actually, we have to observe that since if we're working with SDP lifts, and, and if I work with a convex body, so I, I need to find kind of another notion other than the number of vertices. And it's not very difficult to see that the kind of the relevant notion that you would want to work with is the degree of the boundary of the convex set. Okay, so if you look at the convex set, you can look at its boundary. Okay, that's a hypersurface. Okay, so you can look at what the, the smallest degree of a polynomial that vanishes on this hypersurface. Okay, and this is the, the quantity that will that will show up instead of, of this. Okay, so 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 uh, so let's let's try to implement this uh, this this line of thought. So assume that I have a convex body C and, and it's a projection of a certain spectrohedron. Okay, I know this spectrohedron is a semi-algebraic set, so I can write polynomials that define this, this spectrohedron. For example, by looking at all the minors and saying that they're non-negative or by using something a bit better, the, say the Descartes rule of sign on, on, the, on the determinant of, on, on the characteristic polynomial of this. And then by using results based on quantifier elimination, uh, these results allow us to, to, to get a description of the projection of S, okay, so, so of C. And, and the complexity analysis of these quantifier elimination algorithms will actually tell us how many polynomials you will need to describe C and what is the degree of these polynomials. Okay, and so essentially it will, it will tell us, it will give us an, an upper bound on the degree of the boundary of this convex set C. Okay, so, so in fact, if, you, if we implement this result and use the, the, the kind of the hammers if you, or, or the really heavyweight results from quantifier elimination, then we get that the PSD rank of, of the convex, um, of, the, of any convex body C is bigger than this, than this quantity. So here this is a root of log D over N log log D, where D here is the degree of the boundary of my convex body. So that's the smallest degree of a polynomial that vanishes on the boundary of, of C. And, and N is the dimension of, of my convex body. So, so is this, is this uh, kind of, uh, okay? So, so, so one, I mean, so I think one major drawback about, I mean, about this, this lower bound is that the, the constants here are really uh, not explicit. I mean, if we look at these complexity results in quantifier elimination, they're, they involve a lot of constants that are actually very large. I mean, they're often not explicit and, and most likely they're, they're very large. And, and another kind of drawback of this is that we don't have a way really to check whether this is tight because we're using somehow in a black box way these results from quantifier elimination, so we cannot really know if these are, are actually tight or not. So, so the results that I want to present today is, is kind of um, a, a way to, to, to find a, a lower bound in the same spirit but with, with, um, with actually explicit constants. So, so, this is, so these are the results. So, so the results uses, the result that I'm going to present uses in a crucial way the notion of a polar of a, of a convex body C. So, um, so the polar lives in the dual space, so in the space of linear functions. Okay, and it's the set of linear functions that attains a maximum of at most a one on, on C. And so, so the first uh, result, which is the, the lower bound, it tells us that if C is a convex body and D is the smallest degree of a polynomial that vanishes on the boundary of the polar, so now th this is the quantity that shows up in, in the lower bound, then the PSD rank is at least root of log D. Okay. So, so just to be sure, I mean, if C is a polytope, okay, if C is a polytope, then, then the polar, essentially the, the facets of the polar are really the vertices of my, of my polytope, and so D here is going to be the number of vertices of the polytope. Because you need, I mean, if, if, you, if you have a polytope with, uh, with uh, D facets, then the degree of the smallest polynomial that vanishes on the boundary is D, okay? Because you need exactly one linear polynomial per facet of, of, the, of the polytope. So, so, so this is the lower bound we get. It should be vanished exactly on the boundary and nowhere else? No, no, it can vanish also. Uh, I mean, it's, it can vanish elsewhere. Yeah. Then what about to zero? Just the polynomial which is equal to zero? No, so a non-zero polynomial. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so, yes, and, and in fact, so, so, okay, later in the talk, I'll, I'll talk about the, algebra, the algebraic boundary of a convex set. So this is actually the smallest, what we call the smallest algebraic variety that, that, that contains the, the boundary of a convex set. Okay, so I'll get to this a bit uh, later. 
So, so this is the lower bound, and in fact, so we show also that this lower bound is tight. So we show that there exists convex bodies such that the PSD rank is at most root, I mean, some constant times root log d, okay, and, and d can be made arbitrarily large. Okay, so we show that this is this is. Uh, so, so is the statement of the theorem clear, or is there any any questions about this? So again, for polytopes, this would be d here would be really the number of vertices. So, but. Here you talk about the polynomial that vanishes on the boundary yeah. of this polar. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so okay. Maybe I, sh I should mention this. The PSD rank of a convex body and, and of its polar are equal. Ah. So, so you can also put this uh, to be the degree of the thing that vanishes on, on the boundary of C. But in fact, the reason I put the polar is because the polar is really a crucial tool that we use in the in the proof. So it would be kind of hiding something. Any other? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. So could you just clarify the where is it allowed to vanish? Is it allowed to vanish inside or outside? No. It, so it, it just has to vanish on the boundary. Yeah. So what it does anywhere else doesn't matter. Except doesn't. It yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, it just. Yeah. It, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Is that? Uh, yes. Yeah. And but the, the algebraic degree for C and, and and the polar need not be the same, right? No. 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 They're not the same. Yeah. So you could have like a max. You could have the max. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So okay, let me give an example then because I think, yeah, this, just to clarify this. So, so if I have a spectrohedron like this, okay, I claim there is a polynomial of degree m, okay, that vanishes on the boundary of this. Okay, so can you give it to me? So what? The determinant, exactly, okay? So, so but in general, the polar of this thing will have the, the boundary of the, 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 um, the boundary of the polar of this will actually have a degree that is much larger than this. But, but for spectrohedra, defined using matrices of size m, it is m. So. Yes? When you go to your bound, yeah. is there a, I mean, of course, you can make it symmetric between primal and dual by taking the maximum. Yes, but yeah. It's not like more natural, like, if you look at yeah. the joint C cross it. C cross C polar and, and oh, yeah. I didn't think of this. Yeah, maybe this is actually nice. Uh, Any other questions about the statement? Is, is the statement kind of clear? Yeah. Okay. So, so now I want to, okay, so the, to, to, in order to prove this result, I want to kind of uh, forget a little bit about lifts and go back to uh, something very standard in optimization, which is a KKT system, okay, KKT constraints. So let's assume I have a certain semi-definite program like this. So I want to maximize C transpose X subject to this linear matrix inequality. Okay, so we know from standard convex optimization that uh, a point X is optimal if, it, if there exists a, a certain dual variable Z, such that the following KKT system is, is satisfied. What okay. does KKT stand for? Okay, that's Karush Kun Tukar. Okay. Or, yeah. so that's, uh, these are three people. Yeah. Um, so this is the primal feasibility. And then we have dual feasibility, which is this and this, and then we have the complementary slackness, which is this. Okay? So, but essentially, the, the key point to, to, to know about this is that this is a polynomial system. So we have uh, these are quadratic equations in x and z. These are linear equations in z, and these are inequalities in, in x and z. So, so I want to deal with polynomial e equations only. So I want to get rid somehow of, of, of these inequalities. And then the question that I'm going to ask is, let's try to, yeah, so let's, let's just get rid of these inequalities and let's think just of this polynomial system and let's ask what are the solutions of this polynomial system, okay? So this is a valid question that I, that I could ask, okay? So first I can, I can actually ask, uh, are there just a finite number of solutions? I mean, I know there's only one unique solution of this system. Now I can ask, is there just one unique solution to this? Is there a finite number of solutions? Is there actually a manifold, say, of dimension? What is the dimension of the solutions and so on? So, so let's uh, rewrite. So I've, this is exactly the same system that you saw before, but I've just rewritten it. So I've introduced x just to stand for a of x. Okay. And the first fact that one should know about this system of, of KKT equations is that this system is actually uh, has a finite number of solutions only. Okay. This is something that you can prove. And the reason, so this is formally, this is an application of what we call the Bertini theorem, but it's actually not very easy to see. I mean, you don't really need to know Bertini theorem to, to believe this statement. So, so the reason for this is that if, if we look at the structure of this polynomial system, so this is a, a certain uh, variety defined using quadratic equations, 
and this, uh, these are two uh, linear equations, so we're essentially intersecting a certain variety with a certain subspace. Okay? So if you compute the dimension of this variety and the dimension of this subspace, you'll find if the dimension of this variety, say, is k, you can show the co-dimension of this subspace is, is k also, and so we know that if you have a manifold of dimension k, you're intersecting with a subspace of co-dimension k, you get something of dimension zero. So you can show that this is a zero dimension variety. Okay, so this is essentially what happens. And you need the AIs to be generic so that you don't have, kind of things don't mess up. So, so this is why we have the genericity assumption on, on A0 up to NC. Okay, so this is really uh, not difficult to see. Uh, and so then now we can ask how many solutions does it have? Okay, and now, now this is where we're gonna use the Bezu bound. Okay, so what, what is the Bezu bound? So the Bezu bound essentially tells you that if you have a system of polynomial equations and you know that this system has only a finite number of solutions in the complex numbers, then the number of such solutions is upper bounded by the, the product of the degrees of these polynomials. So if we look at this system, I have here m squared polynomials of degree two, okay? And then here, these are all linear equations. And so I have two to the m squared. I mean, if I apply the Bezu bound to this system, I get two to the m squared. So essentially this, uh, this argument, I mean, these two lines tell me that this system generically has two to the m squared solutions in the complex numbers. Okay. So, and, and this is where the, the notion of algebraic degree comes into play is that now uh, in this paper, so by Jia Wang, Christian, and, and, and Bernd, they ask what is actually the exact number of solutions to this system? So this just gives us an upper bound. So what is the exact number of solutions? Uh, and this is where the notion of the algebraic degree of semi-definite programming comes into play. This is actually the exact number. And in fact, more precisely, so what they do is that they, they look at the irreducible decomposition of this variety and they compute the, the degree of each irreducible component. Okay, but I, I will skip this part, maybe I'll get I'll get back to it a bit later in the, in, in the proof of the other of the other part. Okay. So, but but is this kind of are these two points okay? Okay. So, so now let's go back to to our our let's prove our lower bound. So, in fact, the proof is very simple. So, if I have a convex body C and I assume that it's it's the projection of a certain spectrohedron, so what I will do is that I will exhibit a system of polynomial equations that vanish on the boundary of the of the polar. Okay, and in fact, it turns out that this system is nothing but the KKT equations, are nothing but the KKT equations. Really. Okay, so, so let, let, me, let me try to, to explain this. So, so what does it mean for a point C to be on the boundary of the polar? Okay, so this means that its maximum on C is equal to one. Okay, but then I, I, know, that, that I know that C has a semi-definite representation, so I can rewrite this, this optimization problem here I can rewrite it as a certain semi-definite program. Okay, so this is, this is a spectrohedron, so this is a semi-definite program. And the cost now is pi star of C, where pi star is just the adjoint of, of pi. Okay. So, so now, this is an SDP, so I can, I can equivalent, I mean, I can uh, write that this, is, this statement here is equivalent to a certain system of, of KKT conditions. Okay, so this is equivalent to, to the existence of a certain Z such that this is true. Okay, and now let me get rid of these inequalities and let me just keep these, these polynomial equations. So, so what I've shown essentially is that if C lies on the boundary of the polar of C, then these polynomial equations have to be true. So, so what we have shown essentially is that we have a certain polynomial system that vanishes on the boundary of C. And so if I just look at the degree of this polynomial system, this will give me an upper bound on the degree of the, uh, of the polar, on, of the boundary of the polar of C. Okay, and so again, by using Bezu bound, I mean, this is exactly the same argument that we saw in the previous slide. Um, we get, we know that the, that the we, we get our result essentially, that, the, that, the, um, that there is a polynomial of degree at most uh, two to the M squared that vanishes on, on, the, on, the, on the boundary of the polar of C. So, I mean, I've skipped something here is that, um, I mean, I've skipped a small detail here because we were dealing with a, with a finite number of solutions to the KKT system. Here we're losing, we're, we're working kind of with this hypersurface, but, but it's, it's really, I mean, there's just a small technical detail that, yeah, it's, uh, th this is really just the idea, essentially. Just apply Bezu bound on this system. Okay. So this is really the lower bound. 
or there, I mean, this proves the lower bound because then you just invert this function, I mean, root log d. So are there any questions about, yes, yeah. So since the correct way of writing complementarity is a z plus z a equal to zero because you are in the uh, in the symmetric world, then yeah. would that be m squared or m times m plus one over two or not? Oh, yeah, yeah, because, uh, yeah, so that's actually a good point. Yeah, so we, we didn't try to optimize very much. So we just said, yeah, this is. So anything counts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so, so these two is true. A and Z are, are symmetric. Uh, so A times Z is not necessarily symmetric. So that's why I have an M squared. I don't have an M plus one choose two here. Um, maybe it could be optimized. I, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. It's, uh, so, so how much of a difference is there between the two and square upper bound versus a algebraic degree? It's actually, uh, yeah, asymptotically, it's, it's this. Yeah, yeah. I, I will talk about this in the in the in the other part. Yeah. But but before I do so, is there any question about this proof? Uh, the general idea is it is it clear? Uh, okay. So so let me now prove to. I mean, now I want to show that this bound is essentially tied up to constants. Okay. And this is where I will crucially re use the the formulas for the algebraic degree. I I really need them. Okay. So. Yeah. We didn't use that much about PSD-ness, or I guess oh. I mean in, in deriving the dual. Yes. Know. Yeah. 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 But then, then when you extract the algebraic degree. Yeah, it's true. We forget about this somehow. Yeah, but okay. yeah, but that's yeah. yeah. That's, uh, Uh, okay, so let me now, okay, th this was kind of an illustration of this, so you can actually implement, I mean, I, I have a certain linear matrix inequality that projects on the pentagon, and, and then I, I essentially just compute, I look at this variety defined by, by these equations, and I plot it using maple, and I observe that I actually do get the boundary of the polar of the pentagon, which is a slightly rotated pentagon, but actually, what we observe is that you also obtain some components that do not belong to the boundary that are spurious. Okay, so so I'll come back to this also. So so now let's let's move on because I'm a bit um, short of time. So okay, th this was another application uh, in, in in upper bounding the number of vertices of, of convex bodies. So so essentially, so a vertex of a convex body is a point where the normal cone is full dimensional. So, so this was studied by Monique, for example, for the elliptope, where she showed that the vertices of the elliptope are, are exactly these cut matrices. So, um, and I think Levent also had a paper on vertices of, of, uh, of, of certain uh, um, of certain spectrohedra and their shadows. And so, but we couldn't actually find in the literature any upper bound on, on vertices. So, so this kind of a, a, um, a corollary of our result is that it, it says that any that if, if I have a convex body with an SDP representation of size m, then it has at most two to the m squared vertices. <coughs> so because essentially each vertex of C has to contribute a linear factor in the boundary of the, of the polar. So, okay, but, but then, yeah. Uh, okay, so how do we prove then the, uh, the, the fact that this is tight? So, so the convex bodies for which this will be tight are random spectrohedra, so these are uh, chosen generically somehow. So, so okay. Let, let me. Uh, I, I want to. Yeah. So, so this is really the main point of, of of the result is that. So, so if I take C to be a generic spectrohedron, okay, defined using a certain linear matrix inequality like this, then we know that the the. So, okay. Maybe I have five minutes. I just want to write something. Where is the? Uh, yeah. So. So what? So so remember the. Uh, so I have. This is it, so. And then I have. Uh, and I also have um, C comma X is equal to one, okay? So, so we saw that if, if I look at this polynomial system, so where my, where my, uh, these are my variables really, so. And, and x and z, okay? So if I look at this polynomial system, which I project on C, we saw, I mean, the argument we saw before is that uh, this is a, a polynomial system that vanishes on the boundary of, of the polar, okay? So now I can also do, so if we, if we want to understand the irreducible decomposition of this system, 
you essentially what you want to do is to put rank constraints on, on x. Okay, so you put rank of x smaller than r and rank of z smaller than m minus r. Okay, and you can show, and this is the in the paper of Nier, Ranestad, and Schumfels, is essentially these will be irreducible. Okay, and each one of these, this is this is what I call VR. Okay, these are these form an irreducible decomposition of the of this of this algebraic variety. And and no, sorry, I mean these are all irreducibles, and they cover somehow this. Okay, but but what is what is um, what is potentially the case is that. It may be that one of VR is not necessarily actually in, in, this, in this algebraic variety because it doesn't touch, I mean, it doesn't touch the real same algebraic set, uh, the, the boundary, really. So, okay. Okay, but, but really, the main point that I want to make here, and, and this is the, the main, is the, the, the word irreducible here is really key. Okay, because if I show that for a certain value of R, okay, that this VR touches this thing, Okay, then I know that the whole VR has to be inside it. Okay, and really the degrees of the VR are, are the ones that were computed in, in, in this paper by Nier, Ranestad, and Sumfels. Okay, so okay, you, you need we need a little bit of machinery to show that there is a certain R for which it, is, it will be contained in here. But then if we do this, and then we uh, we essentially do an analysis, uh, an asymptotic analysis of these algebraic degrees. So we show that the roughly two to the m square for a certain value of R. Okay, we can get uh, we somehow get the, the result. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm a bit out of time, so I have to be a bit quick. But this is roughly the, um, the, the idea of, of, um, of the proof. So, okay, so just to, to wrap up, so, so, so I think one, one important question is to know if the lower bound can be improved if we assume the convex body C to be a polytope. Okay, so this we don't know, I mean, because we don't have any example for which, uh, for which this is tight, what, but where C is really a polytope. Uh, in particular, what is the positive semi-definite rank of regular polygons in the plane? We don't know. Okay, and then there are a couple of other questions that maybe I, I, I will just skip and I will finish here. Thanks a lot. For When like it's a two to the n gone? No, we don't have any. Uh, so what is the PSD rank now that we have? Don't you have this result? Yeah. I don't know. No. I, uh, so so we just have a construction of log uh, of size log n, and the, and the lower bound is root log n, and we don't know if it's uh, where is it? Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. So for the LP, would the log b bound is tight for which? Uh, yeah. For polygons, it's tight for polygons. It's tight for the permutahedron also. Right, so this is the construction of Gomans where he used sorting networks to get an n log n. So that's uh, and, um, are there better SDP representations for either of them? We don't know. Th and that's why actually it would be interesting to, to uh, understand this question. I mean, if we can prove that it's log d for, for polytopes, then we will show that it's not possible, but we don't know really. Yeah. That's, uh, Any other questions? What's a candidate for this explicit? Is there a natural candidate? For I don't know. No, no, I have no. Yeah, yeah. It seems. I think what we would need. I mean, so so from the construction here, I I I, I mean, I have some indication of what the sub. I mean, what the dimension it should be. I mean, the dimension should really be in the. Um, half of the dimension, I mean, it should be in the bad kind of regime. Uh, I think it should not be very symmetric. It seems to be this, th these things, I mean, as soon as you're symmetric, it seems that the two to the m squared drops to two to the m somehow. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why, but this seems to be kind of what, uh, and, um, but yeah, I don't have any, any explicit, uh, any uh, yeah. idea. Okay, let's, let's take the answer again. Mm -hmm.